What's going on guys, Bangle again here coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be talking about my real opinions on Madden 22 so far. So that's franchise, that's the gameplay improvements as well. And this is going to be different from my last video on Madden 22, which was the sponsored by EA franchise deep dive. And let, let me just talk about that real quick because there were so many new people to the channel that clearly have never watched me before that are like oh you, you take everything this guy says with a grain of salt oh can't believe anything this guy says it's a sponsored video ea didn't tell me anything to say i i didn't say oh man this game's great because you guys are this is a sponsored video we did a sponsored video on the channel to get you guys inside info and information out there i couldn't just go oh, grab a franchise developer in moonlight swami and say hey do you want to just like give us a bunch of private information and I can just put it out there for a video. It doesn't work. So it was a sponsored video, but now in a non-sponsored interview format, I can just tell you guys everything I think about the game. And that's positives, negatives, things I care about, things I don't care about. And this isn't going to be one of those videos that, oh, Madden 22 looks terrible after seeing a little like trailer, which isn't anything to do with improvements and barely is gameplay at all. Like making one of those idiot videos saying that, oh, Madden 22 is terrible. Before the game even comes out, before any of the features have been revealed so far, what's the point? You're just getting free clicks because, oh, Madden's terrible. I'm, I'm gonna make a video on this Madden terrible for the 800th time and people are gonna love it. Listen, Madden has been terrible. Fair, completely fair criticism, right? When you actually say why. But Madden 22 has made some real improvements, and I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. So let's go ahead and look at some of those and see why Madden 22 might be better than it has been in the previous four or five years, since it's basically been the exact same thing, copy and paste it over the past three or four years. And I don't really care about, oh man, they have new flyovers to start the game. That doesn't really matter to me. I don't care about new flyover animations, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it's cool, new Super Bowl celebration, I never understood where that was a big issue. And we'll talk about some other like big things that people have problems with with Madden 22 so far. It's like, oh, th only three trade spots. Oh, not enough hairstyles. That's your big issue with the mode? Is that there aren't enough hairstyles? This video is sponsored by Manscaped and their new Lawnmower 4.0, which is better than ever, by the way. It's wireless, just like they're charging, which is now induction based. Not like you'll need it too often with the super long battery time. But my favorite feature of the new Lawnmower 4.0 is the travel lock. Just went to my friend's wedding back in New Jersey. And of course, I had to bring the best tools for the family jewels with me. And I didn't want it sliding around my bag, going off, wasting all the battery. Who knows what could happen? But their new travel lock feature is super easy to engage. Just three rapid clicks of the button. You'll see the LED go at the bottom. And then you can't turn it on. And then three rapid clicks. The LEDs go again and then boom, you're back to work, doing everything you need to do. It works just fine. There's a reason why over 2 million men worldwide trust Manscaped as their go-to below the waist grooming, and you should too, it's right here. The Lawnmower 4.0, this thing's unbelievable. You can join them by going to manscaped.com slash bangle. You get 20% off something you shouldn't be living without. Again, that's manscaped.com slash bangle. I know our very own landing page, very fancy, but save yourself 20%. Click that link into the description. Don't want to miss out. I guess I understand why people would have a problem with there being three trade slots, but it's for trade balancing. And to me, I've never really had it be too much of a problem. I've probably complained about it before. But I don't really think that adding a fourth or a fifth trade slot would really be the make or break in a trade. And how many trades in real life do we see where a team is trading more than three assets? Like, honestly, how often? Very rarely. So I'm totally fine with three trade spots. I really don't see it as too much of an issue. So that's where I stand on that. But uh, I, I understand why people want more than three trade slots. I get it. But... I don't really think it's too much of an issue. The staff management. The staff management to me is massive for the game. And we talked about this at length in my last video. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. I know this has been a very uh, aggressive video so far. I've been attacking in some ways. And I'm not like pro EA per se. I'm, I'm a neutral guy that in all honesty makes my living partly from playing the game. 
So that's fair. So obviously I want the game to be good. So I have more fun doing that. But over the last three or so years, I've been doing this as a full-time job and the game hasn't been great and we've managed. So like, I'm not just going to say the game's good. So you go, oh man, I'm going to be interested in the game now. You guys aren't idiots. You guys are going to play the game. You're going to either like it or you won't. So that's where it's, it doesn't really matter what I say totally. But I think staff management is huge. There were a lot of guys that came out and said, oh, well, this is just coaching trees from NCAA 14. It's like, this is not 2013 anymore. It's just not, it's not, it's not 2005. They can't just go into the old game code from three console generations ago and take a feature that was in Madden 03 and just stick it in Madden 22. They have to completely redesign, remake, and re-implement the feature and make it modern. So it isn't just as simple as clicking a button and it's like, oh, well, this was in Madden 05. Would you rather it not be in the game? Would you rather complain about it being added now? Well, I don't understand the point of people that are so dead set on complaining all the time. When it's warranted, fine. But when it's not, just say, oh, okay, great. This is a step in the right direction. Thank God. I know everyone's tired of hearing step in the right direction, but this is actually like a, like a big step. I think the staff management and the talent focuses are going to be huge. I really do. Especially with the player personnel, where you can have special abilities to bring back guys on cheaper contracts, to get guys in trades more easily if they're maybe over 30, trade up in the draft more easily. It, when the scouting actually comes out, you can scout players more easily and figure out more information. We don't know a ton about scouting yet. I'm not going to speculate. But you have more abilities you get strength boosts for your offensive line with your offensive coordinator like these are really cool things that should make each franchise uh, for each different franchise experience unique and interesting and different every time and guess what some people are complaining oh man this is going to ruin the immersion of the game maybe you can just make trades very easily blah, 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 blah. listen all right relax don't use them you don't have to the staff points is a virtual currency yeah but you can't buy it like, it's not a thing where, oh man, you can put $20 in the game, you get 100 staff points. It's just like Coach XP, but designed in a way that actually goes with the talent focus. So, I think it's a fantastic update. I think this is the big thing for me, other than scouting so far. Like, it's cool to bring in these new like these new coaches and and new coordinators and, what that, and whatnot. Like, I think that's a cool thing. I really do all these different skill trees and talent trees i guess you want to call them it's cool to get these abilities and you can't you can't just get everything you have to choose a branch and you have to go down that way and it's going to be really interesting to see what you're going to prioritize more let's say for like a player personnel in the player personnel department I, do they even show it on the screen here uh they do in the player personnel department with trades maybe this is like you can you can trade for younger players more easily who are lower overall and maybe this side is you can trade for higher player overalls but they're older so you have to make a decision about would you rather prioritize right now or would you rather focus on your future three or four years down the line so it should be tougher decisions that really makes each experience unique so i'm a huge fan of talent trees this is a big big thing for me that i'm actually excited about it isn't just coach xp from the past in madden where you hit, oh, increased XP for quarterbacks. That's great, but that's not unique. That's not exciting. That's not different. That's not special. So I'm a huge fan of talent trees. I think it is a big, big change. For scouting, we don't really know too much about this just yet. I can only go off of what I'm seeing with the screenshots. And I'll break it down for you guys from my understanding of it, which is you have regional scouts or they're calling them area scouts, which is fine, but they're regional scouts and you assign these guys to the different region and you can reassign them as well after you assign them if you want to change them. And each different scout has positional expertise. Like this guy is middle linebacker and cornerback. This guy is tackle and tight end. We have quarterback and wide receiver. So those guys, in my opinion, are going to have an extra efficiency boost when scouting a position and probably not only be more efficient but more accurate if accuracy is a thing in regard to scouting these guys for those said positions so scouting is going to be a lot of fun and there were questions about well is scouting still going to be a thing for the custom created draft classes i imagine it still will be but i'm not sure you're going to get different news stories with the created draft classes and 
if you could, you could, or if you wanted to, you could probably just look at the overalls in general and the scouting won't matter. But this is going to be big for franchises that don't rely on the created draft class and use the random draft classes. So you can go deep into a franchise. And for rebuilds especially, I think this is going to be really, really interesting because you're going to be able to like really feel the franchise every single year and really build up storylines with these individual like fake players but the whole idea with the fake players is that these guys want to feel real you want to have them feel like draft prospects and if you're three or four years into a franchise as like we like to do on the channel it's going to be a lot of fun to actually say oh man this quarterback out of tennessee looks really really good and actually build him up to be maybe a potential draft pick and, and see what team they go to and all that and there was a mock draft thing we'll get to in a moment as well that I'll talk about. And with the national scout, this seems to be like your big scout who can do everything. And there are different tiers as well for the scout. And I imagine that's just how good they are. So this guy's tier one, he gets a 5% efficiency boost. Tier three, 15% efficiency boost. We don't know how high it goes. If it's out of three, out of five, out of whatever. But based on how good they are, and maybe you can upgrade these guys or hire different guys who are better, you can then be more efficient at scouting these guys so I, I think scouting when that drops into the game probably like week one of the nfl season so you're not gonna have to wait too long this should be really really good and that, that's speculation by the way they're targeting september i don't really know when it's dropping but it seems like all signs would point to probably week one of the nfl season if i had to guess i also am a huge fan of the draft board moving up and down and it's no longer like you hit a button three times and you scout that player and it says oh they're top 10 in the draft there's no more of that we can see with a couple different things here so like yeah right end speed rusher 5 10 2 10 this is a work in progress so like some things are just for screenshots you got to understand that but we don't know about some of these guys yet he like he's only 70 percent scouted we see his projection he's obviously number one in the draft and he just moved up two spots that's what that's going to mean. And you have him hearted on your draft board is what I assume for that. But you don't know what his true talent is because you're not done scouting him yet. When he goes up to 90 or 100% completion, you can start to see that talent range or that talent range start to unfold, which is really awesome. And for the safety, like he's 0% completion. So not only do you not know his talent in the entire draft, you don't even know what archetype he is. So you don't know if he is like a hard hitting safety or a cover guy or a hybrid or anything so this should be really cool you don't know if he's a scheme fit yet that's why you have to scout these guys and find out and i think this is going to be a really really nice change and then with the mock drafts this is something i've been asking for in the game for a minute now because you can actually start to see these guys as real players with the mock drafts i know i'm obsessed with draft season i know a lot of you guys probably like a draft season as well and the cool thing about this is that it's not just x player ucla and then you see where he goes in the draft like all the way at the end of the season all the way down the line the draft is the last point of the like calendar year for madden season you can actually see these guys and start to picture oh man like i'm the cincinnati Bengals. let's say works with my channel name despite being a giants fan but let's say i'm the cincinnati Bengals, and we need a quarterback which i know they don't but Let's just say we don't have Joe Burrow. We're looking at Tony Swift. But the Steelers, the Steelers are going to get Jackson Felix. Or maybe we're the Steelers and we really want Tony Swift. But it looks like the Bengals are going to take him at number one overall. We might be incentivized to try and trade up, even though it's interdivisional trading. But you, you get the point, right? You can see where these guys might end up going. And that starts to get a heartbeat to the league. And it starts to feel more alive. And the immersion starts to go and that's, that's exactly what you're looking for. You want to be immersed in the league and it, it, you want it to feel real. That's the whole reason you're playing the game is you want it to feel like a real experience, but in the video game, obviously. For the weekly team goals, I'll be honest, I really don't care. Like, I think it's cool to get extra staff points by completing missions. Like, it's cool. That, like, that's fine. I don't think it's a huge addition. I think it's a, I think it's a solid addition, right? But I don't really care. It's not like a major game-changing overhaul. It just goes with staff points, which I think is a game-changing overhaul with the coach trees, the talent trees. For weekly strategy, again, I probably I don't really care that much. I'm not sure how impactful this is going to be, but you can choose a different 
game plan focus to either stop the run or like stop the outside run as opposed to inside run, stop the pass, and you have different like positives and negatives that go along with that. Like it's whatever to me. I think that's fine. It's not like anything crazy to me. Now, as far as the player health goes and the fatigue, this should be game changing for the actual gameplay. Because if guys are playing at a lower stamina, you have to change what you do in practice. And we haven't really talked about practice too much in this video. I talked about it in the last video that we talked about with Madden 22. That's going to be really, really interesting because you're going to choose the pa uh, practice intensity and maybe you want more XP, but that's really going to hurt how much uh, energy they have. And if they don't have energy, they're not going to be able to run as fast. They're not going to be able to stay on the field for as many plays. So would you rather get these guys more XP or would you rather them be ready to go for game time and play their best and maybe get more XP that way? So I think it's interesting. You can choose which level of your team gets the reps, whether that's the starters or the bench players. I think it's it's interesting, again, with the halftime adjustments. Like, it's cool. I don't think it's game-changing for me. I'm not sure how much of an impact it's going to play, but you might get, like, higher block shed on outside runs. So if that's a problem, that's great. But in the past, the CPU is just stupid, and everything's kind of random. It's like they don't notice, oh, man, we're running a stretch play, and that works every time. Let's just keep, like making the stretch a big part of our offense they just call whatever so if the cpu is actually smart this year which they say the cpu is this could be a big change but i, I really don't know based off previous years seeing the coach and the players it, more than just getting the text messages feels way better because it feels like more real and again, the league feels more alive, which I keep saying. It feels like it actually has a heartbeat as opposed to, ooh, you get a text message that's the same one we've seen a million times so far. Like, don't care about that. But for these actual cinematic moments that affect, like, the storyline of your franchise, I think that's very cool. I think it is a big change, even though it doesn't seem like it would be because we kind of had the same thing going on with the text messages, but it feels more real now. It feels more impactful with these like cutscenes, if you will. And for the franchise hub, I think this is cool. It kind of goes back to like when franchise and Madden was at its absolute peak and at its absolute best. And you can see everything in one spot. There's a ton going on, but I definitely like the way it looks. There's a lot going on, but I think it's a big time adjustment. And not only have there been a bunch of impactful changes made, to franchise itself i think it's actually going to feel that way as well so as far as franchise goes i think franchise has made some absolutely massive strides i really feel like with the talent trees and when scouting is implemented early in madden 22's life cycle i think it's going to feel like a very 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 different game that we've had in madden 21 and madden 20 and madden 19 and madden 18 and I know people are like, well, franchise hasn't been good since uh, Madden 12 or whatever, or Madden 09 or Madden 07, whatever they say. Here's the thing, though, is that it has been especially bad the past five years. And it's been like literally copy and paste the last four, five years or so, where the game looks and feels exactly the same for franchise, except for the implementation of superstar X factors and all that. But this actually feels really new. I think there have been a bunch of good changes made to the mode. And franchise should actually be fun. Now, let's go ahead and pop into the second part of the video, which is Dynamic Game Day. So the Dynamic Gameplay Deep Dive came out on the 29th. Eric Rayweather, if you guys know him, he's basically like the Madden news guy. He made a video with some specific information as well. So shout out Eric Rayweather. But I don't know. Like... I've played Madden 22 early with the beta or whatever, and I will say that the game definitely feels certainly different than last year. Now, with the game day components, with the game day atmosphere, I think there are a lot of fun changes in here. I really do. Now, like, do I care about a super fan? No, I don't. Do I care about new crowd animations? No, I don't. I really don't. Celebrations, I don't really care. What I care about is what actually happens on the field. And there are new, like, momentum things in the bottom right. I'll show you guys. So depending on, like, what stadium you're in and who the home team is, 
the home team gets specific advantages. So LinkedIn, while winning, the home team gains more momentum and away team gains less. And when, uh, when momentum has different abilities, when you get it all the way maxed out on the top of the screen there, momentum can actually be pretty big because you get some boosts that really, really can change the game. So check down for the Giants here. Home team quarterback has trouble seeing non-check down receivers and adrenaline away team has infinite stamina during plays. So those are big time things if you start getting momentum, but the other team can pretty much take it away if they're playing well and they can have infinite stamina. The away team quarterback can also have trouble seeing non-check down receivers and then they get that extra one as the home team, which is the home field advantage. So I think that each stadium now is going to feel different for Motor City, the home team accelerates slightly faster. So they're going to feel quicker. They're going to get to their top speed faster. Um, as you can see for the Packers, home team receiver icons are hidden in pre-play and home team has trouble blocking. So depending on how well you're playing or how well the other team's playing, the game gets easier or harder. So I think that's a really cool change because part of the big thing with NCAA that I remember is when you were rattled, or where you were on the road in a huge road game, your play art would rattle. You couldn't see exactly what was going on. Sometimes you couldn't even hot route some of your guys. And that's the thing this year. If you're in a really loud environment, sometimes your hot route just doesn't go to the receiver, which I think helps develop that immersion because even though it's going to be like, oh man, like my receiver didn't here to go to a first streak. What, what's happening? But in real life, these miscommunications do happen. I think it really is going to help out with that immersion. And it does make each stadium feel unique as opposed to playing in the exact same place every single time with basically different team logos. That's what it was. Like sure, the stadiums were shaped differently depending on if you're playing at CenturyLink or AT&T, but it was same capacity every time, which is, is true this year, but it's the exact same experience at every single stadium, which is different this year, which I think is cool. And then for star driven AI, everything's hooked up to next gen stats and different teams are gonna play like they do in real life as opposed, or like along with the, their percentages. So if a team runs at 60% of the time, you might see 60% runs in the game, as opposed to a team that airs the ball out very frequently that they're probably gonna throw the ball more often. So I really do think that Madden 22 is gonna be much better than Madden 21. Obviously, I'm not the biggest gameplay guy in the world. I can't tell you how gameplay is going to feel for the average guy. I really don't know yet. There's still going to be changes made to Madden 22 before it comes out. But as far as franchise features goes, I'm really excited about it so far. I think it's going to be a really, really fun year. So I'm super excited to make content for you guys and play the game myself. So if you guys are new and you're ready for that content, hit that subscribe button. And I'm excited for a big year. I think Madden 22 is going to be much better than the previous three or four games. And I think Madden 23, when that comes out, when it compounds on some of these things that they've implemented in Madden 22, I think Madden 23 is probably going to be an even better game than this game is. So I'm excited for Madden 22. Seriously, not sponsored. EA didn't give me anything for this. They didn't tell me what to say. Again, not paid anything for this video. They're not giving me anything. I'm just telling you straight up exactly how I feel. And I think that Madden 22 is going to be a big time improvement on the previous few games. So I'm not telling you to buy the game. I don't care if you buy the game or not. That's up to you. Is Madden 22 worth it? I can't tell you what's worth it for you or not. If you're having fun on Madden 20, play Madden 20. Play Madden 16. Play Madden 08. Whatever you want to do, that's fine. I can't tell you if it's worth it for you for the upgrade. And I don't care if you buy it or not. But I think it's worth it for me to get the new game, obviously. And I think the improvements might make it worth it for you. But if you don't want to buy the game, don't buy the game. If you're mad that they don't have scouting in at launch, don't buy the game. If you are going to wait to see how it feels and, and see how other guys say the game is, wait and see. There's no shame. There's, there's no problem with waiting. Just wait. I think the reviews are going to be bad on the game this year because I think it's going to take a little while for people to go from Madden 21, worst reviewed Metacritic game of all time for Madden, to just, they're not just gonna immediately go, man, this game's great this year. It's just not gonna happen that way. I think it's gonna take a little while to win back over the fans of the game, and it's not gonna happen in one year. Even if Madden 22 is the greatest Madden we've seen in 10 years, I don't think the game's gonna be reviewed very well. I just don't think so. The recency bias of the fan base says that the game's terrible, and it's gonna take a little while. 
it's going to take a little while. So there have been big changes made. I think they're positive changes, but it's going to take a little bit while to win over the fans, which is fine. Uh, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. It is what it is, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the game in the comment section below. I can understand skepticism, criticism. You guys thinking the game could suck because it could. We'll have to see. But this is what I think of the game so far. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Check me out on Twitter, Twitch, stream every night, and my second channel. All links are in the chat or in the description, excuse me. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.